Great memories of the Rainbow Children open up the concert of a, a show that we saw in Montreal where G. Dassault, co-host of The Up Room. G, great show. Oh, that was fantastic. And our next like guest. Like usual. Yeah, our next guest was a uh, drummer in that band and drummer in so many different Prince tours and recordings. Uh, and he was drumming that night, Mr. John Blackwell. And uh, we welcome John, a great friend of ours, to The Up Room once again. And uh, John... I'm sorry, we're, we're talking on a really, really tough note, um, but how you been doing, brother? Uh, I'm, I'm hanging in there, man. It's, just, it's been hard, bro. Yeah. You know, uh, before you called, I was just uh, listening to a new record that a different uh, version that we, a version of the little record Corvette that we did in Montreux in 2009, and uh, every time I every time I hear that version a little Red Corvette you know I, I cry you know mm -hmm. brings tears to my eyes man yeah but uh such such yeah. a such a change uh you know the different recordings and, and was Prince he was really into changing up the different versions of, of classic songs yeah yeah always um we but I think my favorite, as I just said before, um, after listening to it, that I, I love that version, uh, the arrangement that he did on Little Red Corvette. Mm -hmm. And um, another another song that we did similar, uh, that we changed up, that he changed up, I should say, was uh, the way we did Never Take the Place of Your Man. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, I look back on those songs and, and a lot of memories just in general, you know, and, you know, I tear up, bro. Yeah, you, 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 uh, of course, you, you, right out of Berkeley, you, you tour with Cameo and Patti LaBelle and so many great artists, but Prince, I mean, you, you were it, with him. It was, it, yeah. It was a timeline. Mm -hmm. And I think it was destiny that I, I end up with Prince for the, all those years because it was cameo three years straight into Patty LaBelle mm -hmm. and three years with Patty and within those three years Prince was at numerous concerts uh, of, of Patty and and that's that's when he uh, asked me to join the band after eight months of coming to Paisley Park, right? Uh, he invited he invited me up to Paisley after he, uh, after he saw me on the Pablo Bell Shaka Khan tour, and I was I was just about to ask him if I could jam with him, mm -hmm. but before I could even get the words out, he asked me, and I'll never forget that, and I can't thank him enough for that opportunity. Now, now specifically about your your drum kit and everything like that, could you pick and choose most of what you were using on stage, or was Prince putting a lot of input in what what uh, your drum set looked like and played like? Yeah, he, he told me what colors he wanted. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, basically, uh, like for instance, uh, with the Hit and Run tour, um, the two thousand one Hit and Run tour, I should say, um. I, I, you know, when I, when I started coming, when I started, when I pretty much had to make a move up to Minneapolis, after being chosen as his drummer, um, I would always bring up videos of all my favorite drummers, and I would watch the videos in, in his, in the pantry, in the little cafeteria, or the kitchen of Paisley Park. Because one, I wanted to watch them, and I also wanted Prince to see it. Okay. And one particular video was uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra with Billy Cobham. Okay. Yeah. Who's one of one of the greatest drummers ever, and my all time favorite drummer, uh, next to Tony Williams. Um, Billy would play the See Through Vibes kit. It was a, it was a fiberglass kit, and it, it was like a see through kit. It was man. Um, some see-through whatever and so you can pretty much see through the drums and, you know 
you know, through the drums and everything. And Prince said one day, he said, John, that's the kind of kid I'm going to be on the next tour. Like, I want, I want you to have a see-through kit, but uh, the color would be purple. And so I called Tom with drummers who who I was endorsed by um, at the time, and um, they said, "Oh, yeah, we can do that, but it's gonna um, it's gonna cost you a lot." And I, and I was like, "Well, I'm endorsed. What's up with that?" All right, right. <laughs> so, so I told I told Prince. I said, "Prince, they they, they said it's gonna cost us this such and such amount," and Prince said, "I'll take care of it, Tony." I was like, all right, we're cool. That's right. <laughs> Let me yeah. get back on the phone and order the drums. And then, of course, on the um, musicology tour, he wanted the kit to be purple, a glitter purple, you know, and once again, I, I got that done. And then Welcome to America tour, um, he wanted me to have a double bass drum set, and the color of the kit would be a black with um, traditional stands and things like that because he wanted... He wanted to inspire the kids to see a, 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 a like a traditional drum set, nothing fancy or anything, but just like old school style, you know, pretty much rock and roll. Right. And and he wanted the kid to inspire other kids in the audience. To say, hey, I want a kid like that, or I want to play drums, you know. So he was always in touch with whatever I played. I just couldn't bring up. A rainbow kid or anything like that and say I'm going to play this kid mm-hmm. no it had to be <laughs> past inspection yeah 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 now, now you're talking about the live tours but you did so many recordings I, oh go ahead yeah I'm talking about the live the live situation yeah um, but you you did so many recordings in Paisley Park um, and, and for uh, probably had no idea what, what the songs were going to be intended for right um, no, uh, I, I had no idea. A lot of, a lot of the music that we did that I thought was going to come out was tossed in the boat. Right. I'm, I'm talking about songs that, songs that we did together that were, <laughs> I mean, I was, I, every time we finished, I'd be like, man, Prince, that's a hit. Right. That's a hit, man. <laughs> and he says, it could be, but I'm going to put it in the boat. And I'm like, what? <laughs> no, man, don't do that. <laughs> but he did it. <laughs> now, now, everybody, of course, for, for umpteen years, probably when you were a little kid, you know, talked about the vault. Um, what does the vault actually look like? Uh, I couldn't tell you because uh, I, I, only, I only saw it from the door. I, I saw one day somebody, uh, somebody had to get something out of there for him. Oh, okay. And they open up they open up the door and I um I saw uh I saw Sheila Yee's uh kit that's the, on the album cover of Sign of the Times. Oh, okay. Well. That was you know, that was sitting right by the door and there's some other things in there that I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say or or whatever, but I didn't I didn't go inside. Right, right, yeah. Uh, you know, because I was one I was wasn't sure if I was allowed. Right. Also, I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to get in trouble, you know. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Walk up in there, and then Prince comes down there and says, John, um, what are you doing in here? Right. <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the man on the other end uh, is our great friend, Mr. John Blackwell, who's been uh, so kind to come on our show many, many times. And, and you 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 just have uh, created some of the best music Prince came out with all these years, and uh, you know, look looking yeah. at um, when when's the last time that that you uh, talk with Prince? Um, but it, uh, it was, it was, I would say it was a while. It was a while ago, about okay. last year. Or so right, right. But um, you know, uh, the last thing I did with him was uh, the Hit and Run Phase Two album. Um, that's the last album that he put out. Right, right. And um, that was I really, I really enjoyed that album. That was a great album. Yeah, that that's Michael Bland, Michael yeah. Bland, and 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 Hannah, 
Hannah Ford is on that record as well. Okay, yeah. But um, it was on to uh, be on that record. Um, but you know, I never forget the first time I recorded with him was um, the very first album, I, studio album that I played on. Because before that, I was always on live albums of Cameo or Patti LaBelle. And I was always saying, man, I can't wait to do a studio record. And Prince gave me that opportunity, and it was just me and him um, when we recorded the Rainbow Children. Mm-hmm. Of course, he brought in other people later to overdub, but um, a lot of stuff that we created on that record was created on right on the fly of what he was hearing in his head. Right. And he always told me, um, but what he fed off of was he basically said, John, I wrote it, but I want you to take this and play it like if you wrote it and see the album finish and see the song finished. And 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 I understood what you were saying, so I, it was almost like I tried to make it my own through, through his guidance, you know. And, of course, you know, he already had a vision of how it would be, but he um, wanted me to take it and look at it as in my vision and what I hear and what I see. And um, that, was, that was a big honor, you know, to uh, collaborate with him and and uh, record such a awesome album. And, you know, I, 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 I still, I, I enjoy the Rainbow Children and a lot of the songs that we did on there. Um, I remember one day we had a party and he was playing the Rainbow Children for the first time to uh, the, pa- the Paisley um, people, the fans, you know, he had a party and we, me and me and Prince were in the back and he said, John, he said, you see, a lot of people don't understand this record, but I guarantee you, years from now, they're going to be talking about this record. Mm-hmm. And me and you did that record. And I never forgot that, you know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and... Um we're going to get into, uh, we got, first off, John, we got to thank you. I'm sorry tonight it, it's such a uh, brief time for everybody because uh, we're only up until 8 o'clock. But, you know, you just said some heartfelt words. And um, th- actually, I got the Rainbow Children. We're going to go into uh, the Everlasting Now, which you guys slayed on the Jay Leno show. Yeah. Yeah, great performance. Everybody styling and profiling, and you, you just giving that great drum performance. Well, that was Prince's beat. He actually, when he created, um, when he created Everlasting Now, he said, get off the drums, I'm going to show you what I want. And he got on the drums and he played that beat. Uh huh. And, um, of course I did, I did the best I could do with it. Right. You know, and, um, then I had some great ideas at the end. And I said, Prince, you know what would be cool is if we did a drum intro to the song that kind of sounded like, which Ron Braley did on the um, live Parliament album uh, song, Do That Stuff. And he said, yeah, that'd be a great idea, John, but don't do it exactly like what Jerome did. Change it up a little bit, but similar to what he did. And that's the drum intro on Everlasting Now. All right, John Blackwell. Love you, brother, and, um, you know, we're going to keep that funk alive for, for Prince Rogers Nelson, right? That's right, that's right. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, this is uh, Prince from the Rainbow Children, Prince and John Blackwell, the core participants on this record, The Everlasting Now. <laughs> <laughs> 